No. All right, good morning. Now you can start it, Terry. Thank you. Good morning, Mike. Welcome to Calvary Sonoy Fellowship. What a crazy, crazy morning. I'm going without a net today. I'm going to talk about Israel. Period. I had a whole, I've been studying for a week. I just got back from the conference with thanks again to Jan Markell and Mark Henry and All Tree Ministries. It was a great conference. And the entire book of, we studied the entire book of Revelation from beginning to end. You never learn too much. I've taught it before, but there were some things I learned. And you know, my history has been if you, if you can't learn something, you're wrong. Right? In the military, we always learn something. Always. Something. It may not be the right thing. <laughs> Wait, that didn't come out right. Anyway, um, so anyway, um, I typically will read the scripture, then we pray, but I think we need to pray first. Uh, I think we need to seriously bow before the Lord, and we need to get Israel. Um, we need to get our hearts right about that. So if you'll join me, let's pray. Father God, um, in the name of Jesus, I don't even know where to start, Lord. My mind has been racing all night, all morning. Lord, we need to talk about your people. Father God, your land is under attack. Your people are under attack. Most of them don't walk with you, don't call upon your name. They're looking around and expecting that military hardware to protect them, and they don't realize that you are their strong tower. So, Lord, this morning we lift up your people. We were told to pray for them. Even when they don't look at us as brothers and sisters, Lord, we're grafted into the vine through the blood of Jesus Christ, and we will lift up your people. Father God, they're under attack right now. Evil is at the door. Evil is within. So, Lord, we ask you this morning to be with us as we study your word to see what you have to tell us about these times because we know the next thing is come up here. And we look forward to that. But in the meantime, while we're here, let us be about your business and praying for your people. So, Lord, come and teach us, Holy Spirit. You're welcome here in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 83. There are three wars of note. And I'm, I'm going without notes, so... The whole world's going to hear this. Psalm 83, the war within. Ezekiel 38 and 39, kings of the north, the war around Israel. And then Armageddon. So I'm going to be going from Scripture today, Psalm 83, and Matthew 24. So those are the two places we'll be. <clears throat> Let me just read Psalm 83. I'm going to read the first five or seven verses. Just hang with me here. Do not keep silent, O God. Do not hold your peace. And do not be still, O God. <clears throat> For behold, your enemies make a tumult, and those who hate you have lifted up their head. They've taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. They have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. For they have consulted together with one consent. They form a confederacy against you. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagarites, Gabal, Ammon and Amalek, Philistia with the inhabitants of Tyre, Assyria who has joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot. Well, let's go back over that for just a second because the Psalm 83 war is about the attack from within with help from outside. This is not an Arab-Israeli conflict. How do we know that? What's the evidence? Just this morning news broke that the Taliban has asked for passage through Iran to help Hamas in their fight against Israel with all of the armament that we left there. All of the MRAPs, rifles, helicopters, you know, the stuff that we left behind. They are going to use it against his people. This was not random. And the nations outside that have attacked Israel, saying that they need to de-escalate, are exactly who the, the psalm is talking about. We as a people, 
as a body of Christ need to be lifting up the Jewish people and praying for them, the peace of Jerusalem. We have our Messiah. They don't know him yet. But you know, there has been a lot of, if, uh, I can't say evangelism, but that's what's happening. The Holy Spirit's breaking out all over the place over there. People are getting saved over there more than they're getting saved here. But they're under attack right now. And they've been under attack for about 48 hours. By the time this runs on the radio and stuff like that, they'll still be under attack. This is not over. When the prime minister walks out to a camera and tells the world this is war, this is war. This is serious. For those of us who've been to war, we understand what this means. People are going to die. When gliders can come in under the radar screen and drop and kill people in their homes, that's evil. I don't want to hear about territory. That's evil. It says right here, they have come... Come, let us cut them off from being a nation. That's their mission. Has been. Push Israel into the sea. Now, I'm going to tell you something that's going to happen. I'm going to, I'm going to make a pro prophetic thing right here. We're going to get accused of being political. Because this is not political. This is scriptural. I'm reading from the Bible. This is the Old Testament. Rich, some of you pastors know you like to say it's old and we don't need it. Let me rattle that page for you. That's in the scripture. Like Tom shared this morning, it's a scripture from Barry put out, or Amir with his reports. I, we were just talking, Amir, has Amir slept? No. Constant reporting because the media is not covering it that way. Women laying in the streets dead, shot at bus stops, stacked up, people killed in their homes. What is this but evil? Right? They form a confederacy against you, the tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites. Well, you know the Ishmaelites don't have any love for them. Ishmael and his mother Hagar were put out. Remember that? Ishmael was not the child of promise. Now, even though he was Isaac's brother, they don't get along at all. And we know who the Ishmaelites are. Joseph met them later, didn't he? They took him right into Egypt because that's where they were headed. What about the rest, though? Moab. Who is Moab? He's one of the illegitimate sons of Lot who was born to one of his daughters out of an incestuous relationship because they thought, oh, the world's over because Sodom had been destroyed. And so they got him drunk, and each one of them got pregnant by their father, Moab. And that's not the mother of all bombs, for those of us who know what that is. <laughs> well, it might be. If I was Israel's enemy, I might be looking for that. It might mean a Moab. Hagarites. Ammonites. Who is Ammon? There, there's the other one. The Ammonites. Amalek. Philistia. Amalek. Goliath. The Nephilim. The giants. Have I missed anybody that's coming against them right now? Right now. These are the tribes, that are, these are the people that are coming against them. And the inhabitants of Tyre. Where's Tyre? We just talked about it last week. Where's Tyre? Lebanon. Sidon and Tyre. I even showed you a picture of it, remember? So, as this is happening, as this is going on right now, as our people, and I, I've got the wrong slide up, I'm sorry. As, as I didn't do a slide for this one, I, this is, I'm telling you, I've been wrestling with this all morning. Assyria, that's in Iraq. That's northern Iraq. You guys know who went there, right? Jonah, Nineveh, that whole region up there, they were the most vicious people. You think they're not assisting in this too? God's people 
are under attack. And I wonder how many of my brothers are standing in the pulpit this morning talking about this. I got that question. I just shared it with you guys. I got that question yesterday from a brother of mine. He said, I wonder how many will mention it. Almost none. You know why? Because it's political. This isn't political. This is scriptural. Now, everybody knows what this is? Don't say it's a big watch because it's a big watch because I need to be able to see it. That's not funny. But it's a timepiece, right? Now, if I were to ask you what time it is, what would you be able to tell me based on what's happening right now? Well, let's just go see what Jesus has to say about that. Let's go to Matthew chapter 24. I sound like my grandmother. Well, let's just go find out. <laughs> You're such a smart aleck. Just let's go. I wish I had a cup of coffee up here. I need, to, I need a prop. I would go make one, but I'm on camera. That's not a hint or anything. They asked Jesus, how will we know the sign of the times? How will we know? I did have a cup, Mike. <laughs> uh, uh, it's going to be in my hand. And the people on the radio right now are going, what is he doing? So if you're listening for radio, this is like, the, let's do the old radio days. They're pouring the coffee. The delicious 8 o'clock coffee by A&P Grocery Store. I need a little of that cream in there, yeah. As my granddaddy used to say, I'll buy some coffee with your cream. Jesus was asked by his apostles, by the 12. Thank you so much, Mike. I really appreciate that. Oh, that's what I need my blood pressure to go up more. What will be, what will it be like? Jesus spent two chapters explaining it, but I'm going to take you through a couple of spots here where Jesus talks about this, okay? I'm not going to put it up there. I can hear Lori now. Why did you put the cup on the mantle? Because it was there. That's not the right answer. We're going to be in chapter 24 of Matthew, verse 4. Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. We've seen that, haven't we? How about that guy down in Miami that said he was Jesus, and then he ends up putting a tattoo on his forehead of 666. That's recent. I would tell you to Google it, but we can't say Google. Well, we can say Google. It's YouTube. Well, not on Rumble. So look it up. <laughs> duck, duck, go it. That's what I do. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. But see that you're not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Now, I'm sure there are people right now who think this is the end of the world as we know it. Oh, no. No, 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 no. We ain't even got started. Jesus said, when you feel this heat, it's just the beginning. And we've been seeing it for a while, huh? Do you guys know what happened in Afghanistan after they decided, after the Taliban decided that they were going to declare themselves an enemy of Israel and, and give me passage so we can go destroy them? Two earthquakes. Hundreds dead. 30 minutes later. Hmm. I'm sure that's a coincidence. It's not a sign from God or anything like that. Don't play with these matches. Kids. They're playing with them. Like, you know, when we left there, we knew they were going to be a peaceful government and the transition was going to be nice, right? That's not what happened. A nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. We're not seeing any of that either, are we? Let me ask you this. While we've been distracted with the King of the North battle that they got going on and we're pumping another $100 billion into that country, into that war, so they can launder their money, the real war is happening right now. This is the battle of good and evil. That's just a tune-up for the king of the north. And believe me, he's got his hands in this. If you think that they don't have their hands in what's going on right now in Israel, think again. They want one thing from Israel. And all of us who took civics, we're old enough to remember when they used to tell us they want a warm water port. And they just happen to have one at Haifa. It's convenient, too. 
because we've kept them out of Beirut and all these other places. As a matter of fact, what's today? Two weeks from now, we're going to celebrate the 40th anniversary, 4-0 anniversary of the bombing of the Beirut barracks. Do you guys remember that? I really remember it. That was my first unit as a Marine. And I went into the shoes, into the hole of a Marine who died in that building. And I had a hard time adjusting with these guys because I was tall and lanky and, I'll, I'll say this, goofy, clowny, like a Marine who had the same name as me who was a corporal named Ray Page, not Robert Page. And I reminded them too much of him. And they loved him. So when you're 18 years old, you grew up without a dad, you go into the military, you join the Marines because you want to be a Marine, you know. Nobody will ever mess with me again when I go home because I'm a Marine. And even though they taught me how to, well, let's not get into that. But anyway, that was Hezbollah. Conveniently, they're in Tyre right now firing into the north end of Israel from Beirut, from Lebanon, not Beirut, from Lebanon, from the Shuf Mountains. Because they're not going to miss the party either. Psalm 83 told us who's going to be there, and you know, they're there. Wow. What was that Joe Biden said? Son of a bee. What do you know about that? I can't believe a pastor said that. Y'all can't hold me to that, okay? I'll, I'll dot that out later. Maybe. Okay, maybe I won't. It'll come back, it'll come back and get me later when I run for president. <laughs> Wow, Terry laughed louder than anybody. She's like, Can you imagine Bob being president? That would be funny. <laughs> What's this button do? Wait, Lord, I, did I was I early? Anyway. He says there'll be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. You know, in the United States, we're so focused on self. We're so focused on us. We're so focused on what's going on internally. We don't know what's going on externally. Yet every one of the churches are spending all this money to send out all these evangelists while people are starving to death in this country. And I'm not talking about just food. I'm talking about scripturally. How do I know that? Because I can promise you within a 50-mile radius of us today, there may be one or two other churches talking about this today. I have my, and to look, here it is right here. Here's my notebook with all my sermon notes. Everything's ready to go. Is it open? Because the Holy Spirit put on me to tell you, I want you to pray for my people. And I want you to know what time it is. Everybody's like, oh, the rapture. I can't wait for the rapture. And what does Bob want to happen for the rapture? I want to be driving. <laughs> Take me, Lord, so my truck will be going down the freeway at 85 miles an hour with the, speed, with the cruise control on. Good luck catching it. We're all looking up for the rapture instead of looking in front of us at what's happening. Because if we were discerning the times at which we live, we would be in the streets evangelizing here for the starving and hungry and ignorant. We're always running to other continents. We're always on these mission trips, and God bless them. I mean, we, we, we helped with the guys who went to Rwanda. What a praise report that was when he came back and gave that to us, wasn't it? But think about when we turn that energy loose here. Right? That team has some powerful witnesses on it. And they do witness locally. But there's not enough. We're, we're busy, and I'm not talking about us, but we do tie into ministries better, for what, better Way and the Pregnancy Center and I-58. Those are good ministries to tie into. Tie into. But lots of churches just give money to those organizations and consider that their evangelistic duty. Our duty is to teach the Word of God. Our duty is to tell them about Yeshua and who Yahweh is and who created this universe and who's coming. He's coming. As a matter of fact, I was working on our new web page before I went to the conference, and I was struggling because it gives you three lines, these big letters of what you can title it. You know what I finally ended up putting there? And it's not live yet, so hang on because we're going to get an app to tell anybody. We're going to get an app. It'll be on the app. Anyway, Jesus is calling. 
He's saying, come to me. So when he had the 12 together sitting here in 24, he says to them, hey, this is what's really going to happen. You ready for this? That's what he says to them. You ready? Can you imagine them trying to figure this out? Think about what he says here. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Now, is he talking to the church? Yes. But there's one critical element we seem to forget. The apostles were all what? Well, yeah, they were martyred, but what were they? What were they? Jews. Jews. Hitler tried to exterminate them. The church tried to exterminate, exterminate them. Babylon tried to exterminate them. Medo-Persia, Greece. Everybody has tried to kill them. And you know, it, it's kind of sad in a way, okay, not really, that we won't be here to see how God's going to defend them in the tribulation period when he takes them out and Satan can't get to them. We're going to talk about that in a minute. It's just going to make him even redder than he is. Maybe his tail will get more pointy. Do you know that there are people who still believe the devil looks like that? The devil looks like Katy Perry. You think I'm joking? The devil looks like Brad Pitt. He's good looking, talented. George Clooney, better. I heard Brad Pitt kind of step away and admit he's blessed. I don't know that he's a Christian. I'm not, don't, don't let me go there. But stop and think about it. He, the devil ain't coming to you as this ugly, broke down old demon. He wants to look good, smell good. He wants to tell everybody how great everything is and how he's going to make it all wonderful. Even if he can't find his way off stage. I'll let that hang there. And then many will be offended. and will betray one another and will hate one another. Do we have the love right now? Do we see love for one another right now? We have big name pastors teaching replacement theology. When did that happen? I got this Bible right here. I know it. I know it's King's New King James, and it's got these giant. You can read that from here, can't you? I can't find it anywhere in there. I can't find it. Where did it happen? Where did the church replace? God's chosen people. And when did he finish with them? He said, I make an everlasting covenant with you. When he told Abraham, get a heifer and split it. When he told him to make that happen and he put him into a deep sleep, God did what with that heifer? He passed through. That's a blood covenant. Blood covenants don't just get done away with. You guys ever seen uh, the outlaw Josie Wells? Every man in here should say yes. That's Clint Eastwood. Yes. Good conservative cowboy. When he goes to meet with ten bears, and he says to him, your words have iron in them. In other words, you're a man of your word. And he cuts his hand, and they cut their hands, and they hold hands, and they make a blood pact. That means death or, or nothing. That's what it means. When God himself makes that kind of covenant, doesn't end. Israel is the apple of his eye, whether people like it or not. And we didn't replace them. See, we're part of the new covenant. The blood that was shed for all men. Sins were forgiven. And when we stand in front of that bema seat, and we have to give an account for ourselves, God is looking through the blood of Jesus. And he doesn't see our sin. Why don't they teach about the tabernacle? You know, we talked about Revelation. We studied Revelation at this conference. I've taught it. And it talks about the temple in heaven and how the angel comes out. People forget the Ark of the Covenant was amongst them. Why? A lot of people say, well, it's the reminder that God is with them. No. On the top of the Ark of the Covenant is the mercy seat. And those cherubim are bowed and their wings are like this. And his presence was on top of that. 
And when he went in there, he went in there to do something that you don't think about. Because remember, the great high priest went in there how many times a year? That's one finger. One. And he had one job. What did he do? He didn't go in there to sweep. He went in there to put blood on that mercy seat. And every year when they celebrate that, they hope that they will find mercy. But if he's coming in to the top of the mercy seat and they've got blood there, and they see, they're hoping that Yahweh sees that blood sacrifice and has mercy. That means he's coming to judgment. He's going to judge what they've done. That's why when that angel comes out and says, tells him, go reap. Comes out of the temple in heaven. I'd be willing to bet you that when the devil, because remember the Bible's already written, in case y'all didn't know that, this is already done. This isn't something they can shipwreck. This is done. Whether we like it or whether we don't like it, it's going to happen the way it's going to happen because it's done. That's why Satan's so angry. So when God looks at that life that we have in front of Him, He looks at it through that blood, the blood of His Son. They have the opportunity when He stood in front of them to accept Him. And they rejected him. But they're going to get a chance to see him again. There's going to be 144,000, 12,000 from every tribe that are going to evangelize. We can't interfere with that. We're not out to change them. They are his people. Our job is to pray for them and step up. And you start by stepping up in prayer. Listen to the rest of what he says to them. Many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. We haven't even seen that at all. I just have a question for you. How come all these YouTube prophets haven't predicted this? They hear from God all the time. The old boy with the guitar over in Alabama or the scrunchie in his hair. He hasn't, he hasn't predicted this. Or the truck driver down in Dothan. He hasn't, he hasn't heard our jello lady. Or Copeland, or the rest of them. They haven't predicted this. Yes, I'm talking to you, by the way. Mm. You want to see their teeth? Mess with the business. Get in on their money. You'll find out how quick they are to show their teeth. Rip your guts out. You'll never get a church building. You don't need one. We don't need a church building. You think I care about you? I don't. I'm more energized now coming back from that conference than I ever was. Bring it. And leave my family alone. Bring it. Come at me. All these little nice, daisy, delicate pastors that are having their three-part sermons today, three-point sermons and teaching about happiness. Enjoy that. We know what time it is because we can see. Jesus didn't stop there. So all these false prophets who are out there that are predicting Trump's going back in office, where were you on this one? Where were you? You missed this a big one. This has got all kinds of scriptural ramifications. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't say that. That's being mean. That's not unity and loving. No, it's the truth. Y'all ever remember when you were little and somebody would say, the truth hurts? I'll say, yeah, that belt does too. And the switch. Or that wooden spoon, whatever was close. Shoe. My mom never hit me with a shoe, though. She threw it. But she never hit me with it. <laughs> she, right now, she's like, no, I didn't. She was a nurse, too. She had them thick bottom white shoes. But she was, you know, she had put up with me and my sister fighting all the time. Verse 12 says, And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Uh-oh. What? Is my light not on? It's on. <laughs> on camera, it looks like I got a, a green light like at the intersection on. You ever notice that? If you're, on, if you're listening on the radio, it's how you hear me. Because my microphone goes out sometimes. 
The love of many will grow cold. Do you know how many people there are right now today that could care less what's happening in Israel? A lot. There are people in our government that talk a good game. They don't care. There's people right now that say, this doesn't affect me. What time the Falcons play? Maybe they don't play. Maybe not the Falcons. I mean, maybe another team. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time. Clock's ticking now. If you ever had any questions, look. Clock is ticking. Listen to what Jesus, he keeps going. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. How would you like to have to go through the tribulation period? I'm going to pass on that. Uh, I'm going to take no for 200, Alex. I'm out. When is the rapture happening? Any second, hopefully before we finish. But until it does, we are to be about his business. And his business is praying for his people and supporting them even when they don't love us. Does that mean we turn our back on other people? No. We need to be praying for them too. The ones that want to attack them, we need to be praying that God will send someone in to carry the good news to them. But you know where the biggest problem is? It's in the group of people who wear this little necklace around their neck. It has one of these on it. A little cross there. Oh, I'm a Christian. Really? I just heard you use God's name in vain at Arby's. Really? Where's the fruit? You can say that about me. You can say, Bob, how, how can you stand in front of us and teach you? I, I've heard you say ugly words before. You can probably hear me say a couple more. Peter's my example. The only excuse I got. Peter's my example. Foot, mouth, disease, right? And this gospel of the kingdom, I want you to listen to this very carefully before I move on, will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. We obviously aren't done yet. If you ever wondered what the mission of Calvary Sinoi is, here you go. Spread the gospel. Share the good news. Support his people. Be faithful stewards of what he's given us. Good examples for people. There is so much, so much to talk about. We can talk about the sign of the Son of Man. But they asked about the day and the hour. No one knows the day or the hour when this is going to happen. No one. No one. Jesus talks in verse 30. He says, The sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Do you realize what has to happen between now and then? Well, there's an entire book at the end of the Bible that tells you all about it. The good news for saved people, for redeemed people, we won't have to go through that. But what are we doing between now and then so that we make the, as they like to say, we pad the payroll, we get more souls on board, and we deprive the devil of what his job, you know what the devil wants to do? He could care less about you or me. He just doesn't want God to have them. You know, we talked about at this conference, we talked about the sons of God and the daughters of men. And there's always been a theological argument about what that means. I'll stand before you in the world right here and tell you that I believe they were the angels that rebelled, that mixed with women. Because whatever they were doing before the flood was so bad that God completely wiped out everything that had the breath of life in it, except for what was on that ark. The depravity of our heart is unmeasurable. Anybody who would get on a paraglider and quietly fly into a town and walk and kick doors in and shoot families in their homes, is a coward. 
It's like when you were in school, fellas, and you wanted to fight this dude, but he shows up with his buddies. My uncle told me one time he got into it with some guys at a bowling alley. My uncle had passed away a couple of weeks ago. Only fight he ever told me he got into, I know he got in plenty of them because I could just tell by the way he was. He probably got in a few of his teenagers, your teenage years. But he said he got up on three of them. They followed him out. And he said, well, I can't whoop all of you at once, but one at a time I can whoop all of you. They went for the second one, and he whooped all three of them. That was a pretty bad decision. Good for him. That's not how these guys fight. Oh, no. I've been there. I've been to Afghanistan. I see how they fight. They stand there and watch you roll by as the bomb goes off. And you're there trying to protect their fields that they're selling on the black market. I've seen it. When we look at the news and we see the sanitized version, the American sheeple drink that milk and go, hmm, doesn't affect me. Oh, yes, it does. Yes, it does. Every single congregation in this country today should be in prayer because this is bigger than just Israel in a war. This is a timepiece telling us, I'm about to call y'all up. Because right now, one country who will remain nameless, but it rhymes with Iran, has been asked by another group that will remain nameless called the Taliban to allow them to pass through. I think I might have mentioned that earlier. So that they can push Israel into the sea. Whether you agree with them being a country or not, whoever's listening, because I know we all agree, but whoever hears this and doesn't agree, I don't care. God wrote this book. He put it down, and he said, they're my people. Whether you like it or whether you don't, they're a country. There are pastors out there right now that deny that their existence is prophetic. I don't know how you can make it any plainer. How many times have they been attacked? We've lost count. How many wars have they lost again? Anybody? None. Why is that? Well, America protects them. Well, that may have been true. Have been true. God used us. But guess what the scripture says? I will defend them. Everybody knows who I is, right? Yahweh? Our God creator? King of the universe? He said, I will defend them. Do you guys still got chapter 24 open there? Verse 37. I'm jumping all the way back there. But as the days of Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. That's it. I'm done. 15 minutes early. Oh, no. I like context. That means we keep reading. Listen to what he says next. For as in the days... Before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. I'm not Noah. I got plenty of things that I got to answer for. I got plenty of sin in my life that I ask for forgiveness and remove this thorn, Lord, from me. I got my own issues. But I'm here to tell you right now, I'm sounding the alarm. Time is not even short anymore. It's over. It's coming. This is it. We're seeing it. Now, you know somebody's going to watch this, and it'll probably be a pastor that'll write me an email and say, you need to keep this between us. I'm not going to, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you that now on the record. You can't do that. It's setting dates and times. Have I set a date? Have I set a time? He did. He said, when you see these things start up, it's the beginning of it. I'd like to dance around a little bit and enjoy it. You know, I've, I've told you guys before, and I'm going to say this again. I hate to give Tim LaHaye a plug, but I'll do it. Back in the late 90s when the, all the Left Behind books came out, I read all of them. I listened to them on books on tape. Me and Phil Scoggins, who was here visiting with us several weeks ago, we drove to the Super Bowl in Miami. That tells you how long ago that was, that the Falcons played their first Super Bowl because we were in television together. And we listened on books on tape to the Left Behind series all the way down, 15 hours and all the way back. 
and we rejoiced at how wonderful that's going to be in that time. Well, here we are. How wonderful is it? It isn't. And we're not even in it yet. We're just touching the hem of it. Wait till the skirt comes up and we see how ugly things really are, hairy legs and all. I really went out of line on that one, didn't I? <laughs> he said, They entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. Think about that. Let, let that sink in. And then he talks about two men will be in the field, two women will be grinding. Watch, because you do not know the hour that your Lord is coming. That's true. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. None of us know. He didn't know. When he left this earth, he told us, only the Father knows. He knows now, of course. You know, back in 2001 or two, somewhere in there when I lived out in California, when most of us lived in California or somewhere else, there's a big satellite dish on top of one of the mountains out there in the Bay Area that uh, UC Berserkly uses to listen to space. And they heard a loud noise. And the newscasts, because I was in news then, carried this sound and how it intrigued people. And I remember standing in the newsroom. It had to be a one or, or 2000, actually. It might have been 2000. And I remember standing in the newsroom and people were like, what is that? That is crazy. And they're like, oh, it's probably a big bang. I said, no, that's just a chair sliding across the floor. And they're like, what? I said, yeah. God just said, get ready, son. It's time. And his chair slid back when he stood up. Man, you should have seen their hair catch on fire. They were like, oh, here he goes again, Reverend Bob. He's going to start preaching in the newsroom. Yeah, well, look, I should have because there were five of us out of 200 plus employees. Who then is faithful and wise, a faithful and wise servant whom his master made ruler over his household? to give them food in due season. Blessed is that servant who his master, when he comes, will find him so doing. I'm going to tell you right now, when he comes, he's going to find Calvary Sinoi doing. Every one of us is accountable for ourselves. Every one of us is going to have to give an account for only us. But he is going to ask you, what did you do for me in my name? further the kingdom because we already know we're not worthy that question is going to go without being asked because we already know we're not worthy only by his blood and his grace so what I'm going to do is stand before you right now and give the word out and say pray for the peace of Jerusalem why is it did you ever wonder why the devil wants Jerusalem so bad. Why? I mean, I could get into the geography and the Fertile Crescent. The Fertile Crescent, when we first invaded Iraq, we were told went this way, north and south, which would match the Islamic flag. But it doesn't go that way. It goes up and over, east to west. And if you notice, when he left Ur, Abraham's family, Terah and them, followed that up to where they stopped, and then he came down from there. Same path that Noah and them took when they came off the mountain with two of his three sons, because Japheth's people went north, kings of the north. If you think I'm kidding, go back and read the genealogy, and you'll see Magog, Meshach, Tubal, Rosh, and Cush, and Put, and all the rest of them belong to Japheth. We'll see them later, kings of the north. What's at the other end of the crescent? If Babylon's here, Jerusalem's over there. Now, why is that significant? Because the garden was over here. And when he was kicked out, Adam, get out. And Bob's going to do what when he gets to heaven? Talk to Adam. He'll be on my tombstone. He's gone to see Adam. What were you thinking? 
Just kidding. He probably won't have clothes on. Anyway, <laughs> he's just perfect. I mean, why wear clothes if you're perfect? He's like, wow, that's what I could have looked like? You messed it up for me, bro. Thanks. Anyway, he was kicked out. They were kicked out to the east and not allowed to come back in the garden. That's not where we're going with this. My point is, that's in this area where everything's happening. That's where it seems to be. Babylon was there. Medo-Persia was there. That whole area seems to be, hmm, if I remember correctly, in the book of Revelation, there are four angels bound in the Euphrates River there. Uh, yeah. Seems like a lot of evil at that end. And on the other end is Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem is a specific place that God has very nearly close to His heart. And you guys know what the name of it is? Mount Zion. Not the Mount of Olives. Not Mount Moriah. Zion. Those words I read you were written by a king who built his house there because he wanted to be close to his master. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. You know who that king was? David. And David will be ruling over the Jews in the tribulation period because they'll still be Jewish people. They are not going away. All you countries who want to take them out. All you people who are following a false religion that think that you've replaced them. And on Mount Zion, God said that's where His name is. You ever wonder why that is? It's right there in Jerusalem. It's right outside the, the wall of the, the old city. I have a theory, and it's a theory. I never wrote a good version of the Bible, so you can't hold me to it, but... I'm going to put it out there. I wonder if that's where he made Adam. And wouldn't it just be like the devil to have to have that spot? Because he placed him in the garden all the way over here. Now he doesn't tell us where he made him, so I can speculate all I want to. I'm going to write a book about it, as a matter of fact. It'll be a bestseller. Adam was made, and I'm going to meet him one day. And then those angels fell and tried to corrupt the line. See, they got the big picture. They see what's happening here. They know their time is short. That's why they've stepped it up. As Mike said, that's why there's so many wolves now in seminaries and churches. They're sitting in the pews with people right now today. They're in pulpits all over the place saying, we've replaced Israel. No, we haven't. Because if we have, then that means Scripture is wrong and we're going through the tribulation period. Now, how can they teach the rapture and that at the same time? I'm not very smart. I went to school in Alabama. Jerusalem is a cup of trembling. It's the center of the universe. It's the drain in the tub. All things come there. The UN wants to <clears throat> figure out how they can control it. All the countries want the UN to control it. The Temple Mount. What are we getting upset about that for? I mean, we've all seen videos where they can prove that actually the Temple Mount was probably on a different hill, not that one. But we do know that that rock that's under that dome has significance because that's where Isaac was going to be sacrificed by Abraham. It's just like the devil to want to take it over. Kind of like the Catholic Church. They want to build something on top of it. That's the way it is in Israel. Verse 46 says, Blessed is that servant. And then verse 47 says, Surely I say to you, He will make him ruler over all his goods. It's no coincidence that Jesus said we will rule and reign with Him in the millennial kingdom. Because he's going to reward his faithful servants. And it starts with praying for his people. And we need to pray for evangelists to be raised up over there to give them the good news of Yeshua. To show them the scriptures in the Old Testament, in the Torah, how they can see him, how the law and sacrifice that was represented in the priests and the Levites could do nothing except point at their need for salvation and a Savior. 
It's amazing to me how today in this country with the technology we have in the churches with these giant buildings and all this stuff and these programs that they still miss it. It's amazing to me how the news ignores it. And it's scary to me how few there really are that are anxiously awaiting Him in truth. I said this to a pastor I was riding with the other night. I said, you know what this is? And he was driving one of those little Kia, the little square Kias. It was a rental car. Which got enough leg room in the front seat for me to guy in the back seat didn't have any, but hey, Tom, I'm sorry. Um, I was comfortable. <clears throat> and the guy driving, he's driving, he's looking at his phone, he's driving. You ever ride with a pastor who's chatty? It was fun and scary. Because I've never <laughs> driven on the streets of Minneapolis before, and they're very they're very polite people. <laughs> they're like, Oh, sure, dude, no problem, eh? Go ahead. I'm like, we're gonna die. But anyway, he said, No, what is that? I said, that's the sifting of the body. We're going to be surprised how few there are caught up and how many fall through. So let our job be fulfilled here by doing what he called us to do. Assuredly, I say to you, he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of the servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him. And in an hour that he's not aware. And will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. And there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You can play church if you want to. You can talk a good game and wear a lapel flag that has Israel and the American flag on it and give money to APAC or whatever, all the other organizations, the KUFI and all these organizations if you want to. But he sees through that. We are to have a heart for his people because they're still his people. We are blessed and grafted into the vine through them. He came through them. And we need to remember that it's because of them and because of Abraham's faithfulness, Isaac's faithfulness, Jacob's faithfulness, David's faithfulness. I can keep going all the way down to when Yeshua was pointed out by John and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. My job's done here, right? John was done. And as we're studying right now, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. And as he's going towards Jerusalem, he's having to deal with the church more, the Pharisees more and more and more. And that's us today. Wrong teaching, bad theology, and pride. How dare you raise your hand against God's anointed? If one more false YouTube prophet tells me that they're God's anointed, I'm going to get on an airplane, fly out there, and ask them a question in their face. Seriously, you're not. Because you would have had this on the radar screen if you were. I'm just saying. Now, did I give you anything today that isn't in the Scripture? So they can't tell me they can't teach the Word of God. I don't have one note in front of me. You know what this is? It's our budget from the business meeting. Which I probably should close before somebody freeze the screen and see we don't have any money. But anyway, it's not important right now. <laughs> we were doing fine. I'm kidding. Please remember this. The clock's ticking now. If you didn't know before, you know now. It's not a bomb that's going to go off. It's not anything else. This is it. You should almost be listening for the clouds to open, make the hole for us to come. And rejoice. But I also ask you to let your heart break for Israel. And be paying attention.
Amen. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for allowing us to be able to go through your word. Holy Spirit, you have so much to say, and we don't listen. We're so busy putting words in your mouth. But God, you are a faithful and strong and true witness. You're our strong tower. You're our Savior. You're our Lord. You're our Master. You're everything to us. And as people, human beings, we think we know better. As a matter of fact, we tell everybody we do know better. Our churches are filled with false prophets. People are following them by the hundreds of thousands in these ministries online and these these, these, these wolves that are putting words in your mouth. Lord, we pray that you find us honest and earnestly seeking truth in you. We pray for your people, Israel. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Shalom. And we ask you, Lord, to protect your people. We ask you, Lord, to defend your people. Expose evil there and here. And bring your anointing on this young generation as you're calling them out in hunger. The ones who have the guts to stand and say, Jesus Christ is Lord. Use us to prepare them, proclaim your word, and lift up the name of Jesus as we look up for that blessed return. And it is in your most beautiful name we pray, Jesus. Amen.